Hey guys, welcome to Safi Maxed. Being the student of quantum mechanics, we all know about the importance of operators in quantum mechanics. And we have learned about Hermitian operators such as momentum operator, position operator, and energy operator or Hamiltonian operator. We also know that the measurement of these operators extracts information about the corresponding classical quantities from the wave function of a quantum mechanical particle. In this video, I talk about another very important quantum mechanical operator known as parity operator. The parity operator plays key role in quantum mechanical phenomena such as optical transition and in the phenomena of chirality and electroweak interactions. For the sake of better understanding, I would like to begin from the definition of parity of a wave function. Parity is the property of wave function which specifies whether the wave function changes its sign or not when the coordinate axis are inverted. The parity of the wave function is said to be well defined or definite if the wave function does not change or only changes sign under coordinate inversion. On the other hand, in addition to change of sign, if some other properties of the wave function also change on coordinate inversion, then the parity of the wave function is said to be not well defined or not definite. The parity of a wave function could be even or odd. To understand this concept, let us consider a particle of mass m under the action of a symmetric potential. A potential is said to be symmetric if its value depends only on the distance from a reference point and is quite independent from direction from the reference point. That is, its value at equal distances to the left and right of the reference point are equal. Such a potential um, satisfied the mathematical relation that is v of x equals v of minus x. The Schrodinger wave equation for the particle under such potential becomes this one equation that is I just uh, rewrite the Schrodinger wave equation with potential vx which by taking the wave function from the two terms on the left common, I can rewrite the wave equation into this one form. Now, equation two is an eigenvalue equation with psi x as the eigenfunction and e, the eigenvalue of the operator inside the square brackets on the left of the equation. Let us invert the coordinate axis that is, let me change the sine of x in equation 2. Then it takes this one form, that is, I change the argument of the psi from x to minus x, the argument of v from x to minus x, and the equation takes this one form. Now using equation 1, that is, v of minus x equals v of x, this equation can again be written, rewritten into this form. Equation 3c, equation 3 says that psi of minus x is also an eigenfunction of the same operator for eigenvalue equal to e. That is, we now have two eigenfunctions corresponding to the same eigenvalues, one psi of x and the other psi of minus x. And if these wave functions are non-degenerate, then these two solutions must be multiple of one another. That is, 
we can then write psi of x equals lambda times psi of minus x. And if we invert the sine of x in equation 4, then I can write psi minus of x equals lambda psi of x. And substituting the value from equation 4 into this result back, I then get psi of minus of x equals lambda times lambda sine of x and lambda times lambda makes it lambda square and I can put the result into sine minus x equals lambda square sine of x sine of minus x. Now uh, looking into the left and right side of the equation we have psi, sine, psi of minus x at the left and psi of minus x at the right. So the two sides of the equation agree with each other under the condition lambda square equal 1 or lambda are taking square root on both sides will lead to lambda equals plus minus 1. Equation 6 means that lambda is a constant and this constant lambda is called parity of the state. A state with positive value of lambda is an even function and with negative value of lambda is an odd function. Now we know in quantum mechanics any change in wave function can be carried only through an operator. Therefore, we assign an operator which I denote here with P for carrying the inversion operation within the wave function of a particle and can write the operation in the form P operators applied to the wave function psi of x would give a constant lambda times psi of minus x. That is the P operator in words the sign up the coordinate inside the wave function. From equation 7, we define the parity operator as an operator which inverts the coordinates of wave function and have constant and real eigenvalue equal to plus 1 or minus 1. Since we have already proved that lambda is either equal to plus 1 or minus 1 given in equation 6. Now the real eigenvalues of parity operator further specify that the parity operator is also a Hermitian operator. On the other hand, if the wave functions psi of x and psi of minus x are not multiple of one another, then equation 2 and equation 3 dictate that there must be two independent solutions corresponding to the same energy eigenvalue E. That is, they are degenerate wave functions or the energy is twofold degenerate. According to superposition principle, their linear combinations are also solutions to the Hamiltonian and we can construct wave function of the form psi plus x as a maximal superposition of psi, psi of x plus psi of minus x and psi minus x as a maximal superposition of the same two waves but with a negative sign between them. That's why I have put plus sign when I'm adding the two wave function and minus sign when I'm adding the when I'm subtracting the two wave function in the superscript of the resultant wave functions. Now the first of these two functions is symmetric and the second one with minus superscript is anti-symmetric with respect to the inversion of coordinate x. Thus, even for degenerate states, one can always choose appropriate linear combinations which are either symmetric or anti-symmetric functions of coordinate x. The discussion so far is very general and may not be very convincing for some viewers. So I would like to give an example here. In our video on symmetric infinite potential well, we derived 
two different wave functions, namely psi minus of x equal to 1 over square root a sine function and psi plus psi and psi psi plus of x equal to 1 over square root a the cos function with argument equal to with arguments as specified in the two equations. In these equations a is width of the potential and m is a number and x is the position of the particle inside the symmetric potential well. If we apply parity operator to these equations p sin minus of x equals minus sin minus of x and p psi plus of x equals psi plus of x. In the first case we have an eigenvalue equal to minus 1 and in the second case we have an eigenvalue equal to plus 1. This means that the parity of the wave functions for symmetric infinite potential well is definite and the wave function psi minus of x has odd parity because the eigenvalue of the parity operator for this wave function is minus 1 and the wave function psi plus x has even parity because the eigenvalue of parity operator in this for this wave function is plus 1. At the end, I would request to kindly support the channel through your subscription and if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching.